this is one of the key storage facilities on the river for the upper basin. And the, the primary purpose was to, to hold water so that we could catch it when we have it in times of high rain, high snow, and we can hold it here in, so that we use it in times of drought. Uh, the purpose is to make sure that we have that water to be able to provide it uh, into the river system so that, that we meet obligated flow requirements for the lower basin. Uh, so it, it benefits both the upper and the lower basin in that way by keeping the water here and making sure that we can provide consistent flows down south. The upper basin really is where most of the water comes from in the Colorado River. So we've got the Colorado River that starts in Rocky Mountain National Park, the Green River uh, up in Wyoming as a main tributary, the Gunnison River in, in Colorado, uh, the San Juan River that comes out of northern New Mexico, uh, and then some smaller tributaries as well. So, so it's a large drainage area on the, along the western side of the, of the Rocky Mountains. All of that water comes into the Colorado and ends up right here at Lake Powell. It is snowpack. That's where most of the water comes from. So we watch that. We get excited when it snows. Uh, we get, you know, we don't like it when it doesn't snow, but that's, that's where this water comes from. How much we let out, it, it depends on a number of factors. One is the elevation here at Lake Powell. Another is how much snowpack we got uh, the previous winter as we look at how those model runs show the snowpack. And, and another thing we look at is, is the elevation of Lake Mead. Uh, we operate these reservoirs together so that we try to balance their contents as best we can. So uh, this year we're going to release 9 million acre feet uh, is, is what our models show. Uh, that'll be the fifth year in a row that we've released 9 million acre feet from Lake Powell here down to Lake Mead. Is that a, put that in perspective for us, is that a sizable amount compared to years past, previous to five years, or is that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it sets a good baseline. The, the law of the river, uh, which, which governs how this river is operated, uh, goes back to 1922, when the seven basin states came together with the federal government and they signed a compact, uh, which divided the river in half, uh, and it allocated a portion of water from the river to the lower basin, which is California, Arizona, and Nevada, and the upper basin, which is Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, and New Mexico. Uh, so under that compact, the lower basin gets seven and a half million acre feet a year, and the upper basin gets seven and a half million acre feet a year, or, or what's left. Uh, then you toss on top of that a uh, treaty with Mexico that came several years later. Uh, Mexico gets a million and a half acre feet a year. Uh, so, and we look at tributary flows just downstream from Glen Canyon Dam. We have the Perea River, we have the Little Colorado that come in. And so our target for a year is 8.23 million acre feet. If we release 8.23 from Glen Canyon Dam, that means we've, that we've, means we've met all of the obligations under the law of the river. So in a year like this where we're releasing nine, that's a pretty good year. It's constantly monitored. That's why we, we use, uh, we really rely heavily on scientific models to show what our hydrology is gonna be. Uh, now that's tough because, I mean, it's, it's hard sometimes to tell what the weather's gonna do next week, uh, let alone 24 months from now or five years from now. Uh, we work with Colorado University and, and we really ha have some, some cutting edge, state-of-the-art modeling that can show us uh, these, these long-term hydrologic models. And, and really the, the model we rely the most on, we call it a 24 month study. So we're looking out two years and, and that model kind of shows us based on trends and, and based on what, what we think the climate's doing, uh, what we can expect over the next two years. And so, you know, in a year, that we, in a year where we think we're not gonna get as much, then, then maybe we don't release nine. Uh, but the last five years, we've been able to release nine because we have the storage here. And, and we try to, like I said, we try to balance the contents of the two big reservoirs. Right now, what we think for next year is that we're gonna release 8.23, which will meet that obligation level. That's our target. Uh, that can change. So, you know, we're, we're kind of anxious to see what happens this winter. Last winter, we had a really great snowpack in the upper basin. The winter before that was dismal. Uh, so, so it just depends. Uh, we think it's gonna be 8.23. If we have a great winter, we might see that go up. Uh, if we have a really, really bad winter, we, we might hold there at, at 8.23. We just have to wait and see. So in some years, I mean, are you obligated to release that 8.23 like you mentioned? 
we're obligated, obligated to meet the to meet the requirements. Even if you have the, five years in a row of just crappy snow. Yeah, so that's that's where there's a difference in the upper and the lower basin. The lower basin under the compact is demand driven. So so they uh, the river has to flow at seven and a half million acre feet. Uh, the the measuring point is just downstream from this dam at Lee's Ferry in Arizona. Uh, so that so the river has to flow over 10 years an average of seven and a half million acre feet each year. Uh, if we have a really bad year and there's just not that much water in the river, then that puts the upper basin at a lot of risk, uh, which is one of the reasons we have reservoirs like this. So that even in a bad year, we have the water, we've stored the water, and we can meet those obligations downstream. If you're going through the Grand Canyon, you hopefully have a great rafting trip down through there. but. Uh, Pretty much everything we release from here makes it into Lake Mead. Uh, there's not a lot of straws going into Lake Powell to pull water out. Uh, the city of Page, which is just right here, they get their water from Lake Powell. Uh, the Navajo Nation gets some water from Lake Powell. Uh, really that's it. This is, this is primarily a storage reservoir uh, to provide a, a bank account, if you will, uh, for, the, for the basin. There's not a lot of use uh, other, than, other, other than cultural, recreational, uh, environmental use uh, down through Glen Canyon right here and into the Grand Canyon and then as it comes out of the Grand Canyon it's in Lake Mead.